Hello again from the media studio at Asia Fruit Logistica, where I'm here with Salah Sukaria, the Professor of Robotics and Intelligent Systems at the University of Sydney. Salah, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you. You're going to be speaking this afternoon at one of the sessions. Tell us a bit about what you're going to be talking about. Yeah, so the, the work that we do in, a, in my R&D lab is around field robotics, mm. so outdoor autonomous machinery that can work on farms, yep. um, on different types of farms, and be able to do a couple of things. One is digitization of agronomy, yep. and the other one is to do actions on the, on the produce, from, on the crops, for example, or if we're moving animals around, so things like that. Yeah. Are there any particular projects that you're working on at the moment that are particularly interesting to our audience? Yeah, so we have, we have three strains of activities. One is uh, in the area of vegetable or horticulture mm. crops, so vegetables and trees as well, and robotics on farms for them. Yeah. The second area is around grains, yeah. and in particular they're around uh, weeding and, and non-chemical weeding mm. and different techniques and approaches for that. Yeah. And the third area is in the grazing livestock industry, so moving around beef and you know, animals and things like that. Yes. I mean, what do you see as the next big area in artificial intelligence in farming? So it's uh, what we're seeing is um, more sophisticated algorithms, mm. uh, which are getting much better, better than humans, yeah. are being able to do things like classify and detect individual features. And we're seeing greater computational effects. And so what that means is we're getting machine learning algorithms that are running in real time yes. and doing things in real time. Well, in the past, just even a few years ago, for many cases, you'd have to collect data and then go back to your lab and then just run and process the data there. So now we're seeing it happening in real time. Mm. And what that usually means is that if you can if you can understand your environment in real time, then you can start yeah. to act in real time as well. I see. That's interesting. And I suppose one of the things that we're really seeing and that there's a lot of demand for for growers at the moment is, is not just in Europe, but right across the world, there's a bit of a shortage of seasonal labor that farmers are finding it more and more difficult to get crop pickers. How realistic is it that in the next few years we will manage to automate that process of picking using robots? Yeah, so, I th so I, the thing to keep in mind is that uh, automation works best the more structured the mm. environment is. So if you can structure the environment really well, then you can start to get autonomous systems going through. So yes. if I have trees that are 3D shaped and the fruit's growing in the middle of them or whatever it might be, yep. it's always going to be, well, for, for probably another decade, I guess, it's going to be still easier for a human to be able to pick the fruit mm. than it is for an autonomous system, predominantly because we're so agile, yes. we have sensitivity and things like that to be able to deal with. But we've seen examples where, if, if for example in the apple orchards where trees are growing on a trellis mm. right, and all the fruit's just sitting on one side, and that makes it a lot easier for automation to work in that. So it's going to come down to how structured the environment is for different types of crops. In the grains industry, it's going to be very easy to do harvesting yeah. and, and things like that. Fruit picking is going to be dependent on the crop itself and the architecture of the tree crop and, mm. and what happens there. And we're starting to see apple picking, for example, in those trials right now. Yeah, yeah. I imagine it's particularly difficult on things like uh, certain berries and so on, where they're particularly delicate and yeah, more difficult. Yeah, exactly to take. right. The smaller they are, the more delicate they are, the harder it is. Uh, the more unstructured the environment is, the harder it is. Even, even if you had trellis but the terrain that you're working on is very undulating mm. and it makes it very hard for a robot to kind of deal with that so the whole art, the whole structure of the farm has to change in some of those really delicate operations for automation to work yeah yeah I mean is the natural extension of this process essentially a fully automated farming industry I think I think in some areas it is what, what you see with this technology is that it kind of disrupts the process in many different levels so mm. yes you you will see large-scale farming automations where predominantly a lot of it is automated mm. but at the same time the technology is going to give the capability for smallholder farmers to be able to use it on their farms as well. Yeah. so it's going to disrupt it in different ways yeah and finally should farmers be investing in in technology now or is it a case of wait and see until it's sort of fully integrated is it good to get on board right at the beginning yeah again i guess, I guess there's no one answer sure. um, for a lot of the big scale growers they're saying well, it's going to take me two, three, four, five years before this crop is ready to harvest, yeah. so I'm going to do it now with the anticipation that there's going to be automation at the end of it all. Uh, for other growers, they're saying, well, I'll start using some of it because I need to wrap my head around it, yep. understand what's good for me. Mm. But also, automation doesn't work where you just take a, a robot and throw it onto a farm. There's infrastructure yeah. changes. and so, so some of the farmers are saying, well, let me start to think about it now. Mm. And others are just saying, well, I'll just wait. You know, yeah. it's, the cost of technology is going to drop, and I'll just wait for that process mm. to happen then. So it just depends on where you are on that sure. business spectrum. Well, it's going to be fascinating to watch as the industry evolves at probably quite a rapid pace over the coming yeah. years. Salah, thank you so much Pleasure. for your time. Please join us again. 
from the media studio at Asia Fruit Logistica.